Hey guys, Vern's here, back again with another Supercoach video. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about our trades heading into round 15. Uh, as we knew, there was a few things that were happening in the week that we did have to know. First of all, Sicily unfortunately didn't get off, and then Oliver didn't actually get named. Now, I know I'm doing this before the teams get released um, for the rest of the week, but I do feel it's important to get this out just because of Oliver obviously not being named. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other options people sort of want to go for here. Uh, Petrarca obviously being one of them that people could look at. Um, now, what I will just start the video off with is I'm just going to go over a little question here. Uh, I would love to do more Q&A stuff, so guys, always leave your uh, you know questions and whatnot down below in the comments. I personally always get back to those. Uh, make sure to give them a little like. Um, but this one came in from Dragon Wings uh, 585 I did reply to the comment, but I think doing it... Um, through the video just to help out those that you know don't go back and read those comments um, is helpful. Now um, Dragon Wings basically asked they're looking at Laird this week so they're going to use Briggs to upgrade to Laird this week or they could wait a week and they can put Briggs into R2 and then use Marshall to get Clary. Now that that is obviously a really tough call to take. Um, what I have said here is at the end of the day, I love the Clary option because I did like, I, I do not just like Clary as a player and I just like what he has set up, but knowing he isn't coming back from injury for another week at least, I thought, you know, if he gets the game in this week, even if it's a sub average game, it's his first game back and we've never seen Clary off at injury before. So I thought that wouldn't be too bad than bringing him in the following week after seeing his form. Um, and giving him that week to get back into the, you know, the grind of things. Fortunately, he doesn't get back in, so that makes it a little bit less in the Clary's favor. Um, obviously, Briggs and Marshall is, you know, they are my two Ruckman, and um, I understand for a lot of people that run Briggs at R3, it does feel like a waste to honestly move him on, and when you have someone like Marshall holding an extra 120k, hasn't been performing as well as Briggs, it does... Um, beg the question that why not just keep Briggs and move someone else on it's basically a rookie upgrade right there if you move Marshall instead it's basically you know you saving 150k from you know doing a one down so you get the upgrade straight away which is nice obviously um now what I did say is basically if you are only fit uh fielding 17 this week and Laird's going to push you to 18 Laird's going to be obviously extremely important there so I, I would recommend getting Laird as I think you know a minimum Laird goes 100 is Clary going to out average Laird by 10 points a game for the rest of the season I don't think he will um we're obviously waiting a week for Clary now obviously everyone has to wait a week for Clary and I just don't know. For those that are being patient and doing it, fair enough to you, but I would I would probably look at getting a premium this week. I'm sure a lot of people are struggling with this week, um, with all the dogs and, uh, you know, Toronto out, uh, things like that. I feel like players, it's hard to actually put on field where you don't have the port boys either. Uh, a lot of people running green. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people are struggling for 18, so I do think getting a premium on field this week, it, it's, it's going to be the extra you'd assume with a premium a minimum of 100 points and then if you're bringing in someone like Petrarca, Merritt, Laird, who are you bringing in that's going to average 10 more points than them if you were to wait a week? Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be the best overall play. Um, now I do think if you're playing for leagues you could be conservative and wait for Clary as I think average wise Clary's still going to be the best you know out of all of them. Um, that's just my feeling. I feel like Clary's the kind of player that he's going to come back and it's going to be like he was never injured. But getting him in, I think, getting a pl player in this week is better for the overall. So if you're playing for the overall, I do think one of these three could be a really good pick. Um, also with Melbourne's run, obviously Melbourne being a top team, we are expecting them to win a lot of games and we all know Petrarca is a downhill skier. So there's a few difficult games in here, but you're going to assume that they run over most of these games, honestly. Um, and some of them give up points to midfielders, so I wouldn't be surprised if Petrarca has a really big end to the season, and I think he's a great option to go for if you need someone this week. Um, Laird, obviously a lot of people do have Laird. I do think in our Dragon Wings position, if you don't have Laird, he would be my number one target personally. Um, just like Laird as a player, and it does feel like he's had some form recently, and he started, yeah, look at, look at these last five. Obviously, he had the 80, sorry, 98, but even from back here, yeah, he's been in good form for a while now, and I just, yeah, at, outside of that 50, if you take that out of his score, his average definitely bumps up by, I feel like, five points. Like, 
Yeah, so I, I feel pretty confident. I think Laird would be the best option out of them. Most people are running Laird, so I think Petrarca is the next one to go for. So, um, yeah, just in regards to your question personally, I think you go for Laird this week. Um, I think that's better than waiting the week for Clary. Um, and I hope that helps anyone else that was looking at trades. Now, jumping into my trades, as we can see, I've actually brought in Laird and Brayshaw. So we're just going to go to undo changes just so we can see everything. We've moved Sicily, Sincorda, and Ford out. Merrick, uh, Brayshaw, and Laird. So we're obviously expecting Brayshaw Laird to play. I think everyone's expecting Merrick to play, so no problem there. And then this still technically leaves with only 17 playing. So I will probably end up moving... Um, I'm expecting Johnson to be named. That's, that's one of the things. I do think he would, from what I've heard, he's going to play. Uh, I might end up having to move Anguin down to this one of the 102k players, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, obviously, it does still bank us about 88k, puts us to about 200k in the bank. And I mean, hindsight-wise, our team's actually completed. Like, once we put Sheezel on field, yeah, we have Day Sheezel here, which isn't the greatest looking. But once we put these three premiums in, we're completed there with Tom Green as our M8. Rosie jumps on field and we're running Keys as our F. Uh, six. So the team's actually completed and we're sitting on 200k with four trades left. Now, I know a lot of you th probably thinking, what's the point? My plan is, honestly, we want to be running Sheasel, Day, and Keys as our loophole options. And so what I would like to do, personally, is get Sicily when he comes back, honestly. Um, 200k in the bank, Melikin's going to earn some money, Johnson's going to earn some money. Um, hopefully, yeah... I can trade out Johnson, swing Constable to the midfield, and then that leaves the loop with Day and Constable. Um, I would need to get a forward defender in to be able to loop Sheasel back and forth, so I don't know if that's going to happen, but at minimum we'll have the uh, loop um, through the mid and through the defense line. Um, so that's not too bad. And yeah, honestly, upgrade Johnson to Sicily. Now, obviously, Sicily is 650k. Um, hopefully Johnson can earn another 80k and then maybe we can do a one up one down Melikin out Johnson up yes that'll leave us with two trades but we do have as I mentioned we have a cover player we have a 23rd player Sheasel Day Keys who are all solid enough that I don't see a problem with that someone goes down for a one week injury no problem we put them on field someone goes out for more long term we probably use the trade but that's honestly what I'm thinking team-wise, how we finish this team off. Now, the other thing I guess I could look at, I don't think I will do this, but it would be trying to get Clary back in. Um, I guess I'd have to look at maybe upgrading someone like a green to a Clary who's been sort of underperforming, but he's about 100k off, and that would probably require another one up, one down, which just isn't you know plausible with these sort of trades. So I will put myself in this position where I'm probably giving up Clary by bringing in Brayshaw now. But as I sort of mentioned, I think bringing in Brayshaw now, it, it's a little unfortunate we didn't get him last week because if you told me in hindsight that Clary wasn't going to play this week and Sicily wasn't get off, wouldn't get off, hell yeah, we would have bored in Brayshaw last week. I didn't know we were going to bank 77 extra points because Ford only gets the 30. Johnson and Ford have been rookies that have been scoring better than that. So unfortunately, didn't think that would happen. Didn't think it'd be such a big gap. But 77 extra points for last week, awesome. Then we get Brayshaw playing in this week on top of, you know, instead of waiting for Clary. Great. You know, hindsight-wise, I would have definitely backed in getting Brayshaw for two weeks instead of missing Clary for two. So it's really unfortunate that, I guess, what happened with Sicily happened because I was going to do the 50-50 between Laird or Clary. I wasn't sure which way I was going to go with that um, last week if I moved Sicily on. But as I said, the upside that if, you know, if Sicily gets off and I've moved him on, that's just like, that's probably the end of the season. And as much as it was unlikely he was going to get off, I just thought that this was the... This was probably just a safer play, and as I thought, said, I didn't think the damage would be so severe. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would, wasn't, I, I wouldn't have been surprised if Brayshaw popped out of 110, 120, whatever, but I would have thought jo Johnson or Ford, I would have thought my lower scoring premiums would have been closer to the 60 mark, um, and potentially the damage just be a little bit less, but unfortunately them dropping the 30s really means that uh, getting Brayshaw last week would have been massive full stop. 77 points is a lot of points in the total points game. That probably puts me into the top 1,000 if I had that 77 extra, so really unfortunate to have missed that. Um, but yeah, I guess we're just going to go for Brayshaw this week. As I mentioned, Clary coming in next week. Um, I think, as I mentioned, Melbourne's run's pretty good to finish, finish the season, but... 
uh, e even with this, let's assume Clary gets in next week. We're going to have the one extra game from Brayshaw. We have eight games left. Brayshaw comes out with 100. You're going to need to get more than 10 points on average, probably good 12 13 points more than Brayshaw for the rest of the season. And Brayshaw's been in good form. Like, yes, on the averages right now, Clary's going to be ahead by 20, but Brayshaw's been in really good form, so I don't know if that's the case. On top of that, who says Clary even gets back next week? We were expecting Clary to be out for two, and he's now missed five weeks. I thought last week with him having the bye, I was thinking it was one of those things where he would have played last week, but he had the bye, so he gets an extra week rest. Brilliant. Love it. Extra week. I'm all for that. But... That's not actually what ends up happening, and unfortunately ends up out for five at minimum, and I mean, yeah, we just don't know. And as we said, who knows, we've never seen Clary off an injury. He might come back, and he might be a little bit slow out of the gates. He might have some of his maybe worst games for the year, and then boom, that leaves way for Brayshaw to even get a bit more of a lead, and then by the time Clary needs to make up the difference between them, he needs to make up 20, 25 points more per a game and it just doesn't you know it just ends up more beneficial for Brayshaw once again hindsight wise if I knew after you know on Clary's buy um which was last week I would have definitely brought Brayshaw in so it's, it's a little bit unfortunate that we didn't get him in for the extra 77 points on top of whatever he would have got this week that would have been a huge difference and there's no way Clary would have made up that gap so a little bit unfortunate there um but that's 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 okay. That's just what happens sometimes. You got to take a risk. It was probably not even a 50-50. It was probably a good 80-20, 20 percent chance that Sicily gets off. But if he does and you move him on, it's probably just like season losing. Um, so I decided to you know just be patient, and I didn't think the damage as the damage would be that big. So yeah, just wanted to go over my trades this week and my thought processes in regards to it. Now teams will be out in about an hour twenty. We'll know who's playing, and as I said, I'll I'll just grab whatever one hundred two k rookie is available and get them on field. Um, that's basically going to be the plan there. So Angwin probably goes down. Um, yeah, definitely Angwin going down because I just don't have anyone else that's viable that's not playing. So. Outside of that, the guys that aren't playing are all premiums that I'm going to be keeping. Um, even kit, counting Sheasel as a pre premium for a swingman. The only other one is Angwin, Sharp, Madden, and we're obviously not moving on Madden. Sharp doesn't really have enough cash on him, and Angwin at least gets us a little bit more money, uh, which might make things a little bit more easier to get to Sicily at a later date. So, yeah, there's my plans moving forward, guys. Um, I've probably rambled way too much for all of you. As I mentioned, feel free to leave uh, you know comments and questions below. I'm always happy to answer those. I would, I would love to do more of you know, a second video in the week, later in the week, where I answer questions from the... Um, from the round review, that that's something I'd love to do. Uh, obviously, if you do leave questions now, I will try and get to them as fast as I can. Uh, I'm going to be out working until about nine, so I've got to get out very soon. Um, so I'm not really going to get to them before the Melbourne or Geelong game, but if you have any other questions for, I guess, the teams in the rest of the week, I should be able to get to those questions before those games. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Really appreciate it. Always appreciate uh, you guys watching these videos, especially those that stay right until the end. Um, thanks for liking, subscribing, and honestly just being here for the journey, guys. So yeah, thanks again. Peace. Later.